In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a new project in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. I'm also going to show you how to set your scratch disk settings and how to create a new sequence. So to start off with, if we just open up Adobe Premiere, which can be found in Applications, or if you use the Spotlight, which is the magnifying glass in the top right hand of your computer, and type in, start typing in Premiere, you will then want to select the top hit, Adobe Premiere Pro CC. So if we just double click that, it will then begin to open. Um, this can take quite a while to open if you haven't used it before. Um, so just bear in mind it can take a little while to open. Don't think, why isn't it opening? It can take a while to open. Um, once you've opened it, um, if you've used it before, you'll be greeted with a window like this where you can create a new project or you can open a recent project. If you haven't opened this before, you'll instantly be greeted with this window called New Project. And this is basically where you can set up your Adobe Premiere Pro project. So to start off, you want to give it a name. I would choose to name this um, whatever project you're working on. So for example, um, for video production, it'd be your Minute Movie, or for or advertising, it'd be your advert. So I'm just gonna name this Test Project 1. You then want to choose the location where this project is saved. So if you click Browse, you want to navigate to your P drive. Again, I've used this before, so it's automatically gone to where my last project was and my last um, Premiere folder, but you're gonna to wanna to go to your P drive. So if you just select the little arrows here and you wanna to go to the one with the iMac um, icon, which is basically selecting your computer, you then wanna select your personal drive. So mine's my name, yours will be your student number. You can then navigate to the unit in which your folder structure um, has been created in and um, hopefully you have done that for organizational purposes and um, mine is on the desktop this time so I'll just go there again this is my folder structure which yours should look very similar to go to Premiere Pro and just select that so then you click choose and um, you've now chosen your location where your project is going to be saved you do not need to alter any of these general settings if you then go to scratch disks this is where we want to um, set your scratch disks and where they are saved. Um, a little bit about scratch disks first. Um, so basically, captured video and captured audio is basically when you connect a camera to the computer, some cameras you can't just drag and drop the video files onto the computer like we do. And um, We pop in the SD card in the side of the computer and we can drag and drop our video files into the footage folder and then import them into Adobe Premiere. Some cameras don't allow you to do that because of a certain codec in which the videos are recorded at. Um, so what you have to do is plug the um, camera into the computer and using Adobe Premiere, you capture the video and audio from the camera onto the computer. And basically these folders um, that you'll set is basically where that footage, where that captured footage and audio would go. Um, even though you probably won't do this, um, you still need to set these. Um, video previews and audio previews is basically whenever you um, preview any of your work by pressing spacebar or playing it or if you um, add any effects and you render any of these effects on your clips it will basically be where these temporary kind of video files get stored um, so it's always worth setting them as well and um, project auto save is basically self-explanatory it's where all your auto saves will go so if your project for some reason crashes hopefully it won't, and um, you know exactly where to go to access your um, last autosave if it's been a while since you've actually saved your project. Um, CC libraries is basically, CC libraries is on the cloud and you won't use this. Um, it's basically if you had any footage um, or any projects stored on the cloud, um, the Adobe CC cloud, um, you can then download them. And this is basically selecting the folder where they would download to. Um, so let's just change these. So to do that, if you click Browse, you're going to want to then navigate to that P drive um, and your folder structure you created. So selecting the downward arrows, and if you select the iMac again, you can then navigate to your P drive. Mine again is my name. I've double clicked. Don't double click. Just select it once. Again, it's opened it automatically now. Um, and then you would go to that unit that you've created um, and you'd want to find that folder structure that you've also created. Mine this time is on my desktop, so I'm just going to go to my desktop. This is the folder structure I've created. I want to select Premiere Pro then, so 
once you're in to your folder structure in your correct unit for your project, you want to go to Premiere Pro and then you want to select Scratch Discs. You then want to choose these. And then you do this for all of these. However, you only need to go to them once, it'll automatically find it for all the others. So then you click Choose, Choose, Choose. choose and choose and that will basically adjust it. You can then see that the path will have changed to um, your student drive Premiere Pro um, so you can see exactly where that make sure that they're all set and saved to the scratch disks. Once you've done all this you can click OK. You'll only have to do that once for each project you start and um, after that you'll see Adobe Premiere then opens you are greeted with the main interface and um, more than likely it will be set out like this sometimes it can adjust um, so to start off with you have your project window down here and um, your browser and um, this is where your sequence will be your footage will be you also have your effects tab here and um, you've then got your timeline here which is where you'll do the majority of your editing and basically set up your video clips into a fluent and um, actual project. You've got your tools here, you've got your audio levels here. Up here you've got your program monitor and um, aka the canvas which is basically whenever you're editing down in the timeline you'll see it in your program monitor here. Over here you have your source monitor aka your viewer so whenever you preview any of your imported video clips or images or audio it'll open up here. Um, also, as a note, you also have effects controls here. So whenever you add an effect to um, a clip in your timeline, if you double click it, you can change and alter the effects up here. So that's just a, um, a quick overview of the interface. Um, I'm now going to show you um, how to create a new sequence. So if you go to File, New, and then click Sequence. Um, again, because I've used this before, it's automatically gone to what I generally use for my sequence settings, which is digital SLR 1080p and then DSLR 1080p 25. But for um, someone that hasn't used it before, um, it might open up on a different one. So if you just go to digital SLR, use the little triangles to the side to expand it, and then select 1080p, and then you want DSLR. 1080p 25. The 25 stands for frames per second. And the reason why we go for the DSLR 1080p is basically more, more likely than not you will have filmed using the um, Nikon D3200 cameras, which are DSLRs. Um, so you're basically telling Premiere that you want to match your sequence settings, your timeline settings, to what you recorded from the camera. So basically it will stop it having to render so much um, and it just makes life easier for you to select this. So um, you'll more than likely want 25 um, frames per second unless you change the camera to film at 24 frames per second, which you might have done for that more film look. Um, if you didn't adjust the settings, there will still be what I set every camera to, which is 25 frames per second. So select DSLR 1080p, 25 frames per second. You then want to give your sequence a name. So for this, you'll probably want to name it the same as your project. So mine is test project one, and you might want to name it edit one, because you might do more than one edit of the same video. And um, just so you don't lose it, you might want to create more than one sequence for each edit, basically. So once you've named it, you can then click OK. Inside your project tab in your browser window, you'll then notice your sequence and is there. And don't worry if libraries, a libraries window has opened, just click on to project. Sometimes that libraries window can open and it's basically directing you to your um, the Adobe CC cloud, which obviously we won't be using. So just select the project um, window here and you'll notice it says project and then test project one. Yours will say project, minute movie or whatever you named your main project. And um, so yeah, so you've got your sequence here and just before I go, there is a couple of things. You can adjust the way you view your browser down in the bottom. And you can have the list view like I have, which I personally think is the best way to view it. Or you can have the icon view. 
Um, so basically when you import your footage, you can see them as icons. You can scrub through them a little bit here as well. Personal preference, obviously, I prefer the um, list view. Um, so that's it. That's how to set up your initial project, um, how to set your scratch disks, and how to create a new sequence. I will do some further videos on um, some more of the Premiere Basics, um, so you can feel free to check them out. Um, but there you go.